Um, thank you everybody for coming in here this morning. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, the difference between uh, custom versus premium uh, WordPress themes. Um, a lot of you may be on different spectrums in terms of whether you're an individual or whether you're a business and um, or maybe starting to you know, revamp your website and not really sure where you should go. There's some really good tools that I'm going to, um, some good tips I'm going to give you about this. Um, So first we're going to start off with um, using a developer or a developer team. Um, what happens with the developer um, is that, or a develop, or, or development team, is that you end up, you, you end up utilizing uh, a, a good skilled workforce. Um, they usually know what they're talking about. They usually have you know, several people that are good at certain things that all together brings up a really good product. Um, they're going to make sure that your website is, um, is responsive. They're going to make sure that your website is mobile friendly. Um, they're going to make sure your website loads, um, you know, optimally, and all of those core things that you don't really think about. That normally you're probably thinking about aesthetics and you're thinking about how it's going to look and, and all that other stuff. They're going to kind of make sure that all of those behind the scenes things are taken care of. Um, and usually you have a good couple of people to contact, if not maybe even one point of contact with that team or with that developer, um, where they uh, are able to, you know, kind of manage your project as it goes. And so there's, there's, step, there's steps in their process where you have a discovery phase, you have um, things like that to identify what you're going to be doing um, along the way. Uh, next slide, please. Um, one of the things that I love about you know, using a developer is that um, you're kind of like a kid in the candy store. Uh, when, you, when you sign or when you subscribe to or you know, uh, pay for a developer, um, you can kind of tell them what you want, right? You can say, hey, I want this website that's going to have this, it's going to have this, it's going to have that. You're almost limitless in terms of what you want, but also within some restrictions that they're going to tell you based on how they're going to build it and functionality and things like that. But what's nice is that depending on how uh, unique or niche that your business is and what you're really trying to put forth, um, you, they're really going to be able to kind of pull that out of you, identify those, those, those things that really need to be on your website in terms of functionality, and, and really make those work great for you. And that's really what you want when, you come, when, you're, when you're talking about a website anyway. Um, you don't need to know any coding. And that's probably the, one of the bigger advantages about using a developer, is that you don't necessarily need to know anything about how to code, what to code, things like that. They're really going to take care of that for you. You really want to focus on your objectives, your key objectives, and what your business is about, and how the website is really going to work. Um, you know, for your customers, um, how they're going to interact with the website, what they're going to download, if it's going to tie in with an app, if it's going to tie in with your POS, all of those things are really complex things that we don't really think about um, normally on the, on, the, on, the, on the, you know, customer side in terms of how the website's going to work. They're going to kind of take all that into consideration and they're going to build it for you. All right? Next slide. Thanks. They're also going to manage your hosting. This is a really big thing. Um, if you don't know, there's different types of hosting, anywhere between uh, shared hosting to virtual private servers. Um, how many people know if they're on a shared server or they're on a VPS right now? A few people know. So the difference between shared hosting, and I just want to kind of dispel this and put that out there, the difference between shared hosting and VPS is that if something happens with this person's website and their site gets hacked and they're on a shared plan, chances are every other website on that server is now vulnerable or will go down because they're, they're hacked, right? A developer is going to understand this and is going to understand your business model and they're going to make sure that they're going to put you in the best hosting platform that's going to be best for your business, right? To make sure that you have continuity, to make sure your website's you know, operational whenever that it needs to and really have that 99.9% .9 uptime. Um, if you don't know these types of things, you'll just go with whatever, you know, whatever hosting company that says they're going to give you some kind of a deal, and then over time you start to realize, hey, my website's running kind of slow, what's going on? And that's a fight between you and your hosting platform And you know, if you don't know any better. Um, and then it could also be costly because trying to upgrade from going down, you know, from starting from the bottom level to go up could be pretty costly had you not just gotten to where you needed to be right up front. Um, speed is also a really big thing right now. We want websites to load you know, within a couple of you know, milliseconds three to five milliseconds, we want to see that home page. Um, large graphics, uh, videos, things like that, all that stuff takes, you know, have to get taken uh, into consideration. And so your developer or your development team are going to really know that and they're going to make sure that it's optimized the right way. And then um, how many of you guys here have websites that are mobile friendly? 
Good. It's like almost half the room does and the other half doesn't. Um, not only does your site have to be responsive and now Google mobile friendly, um, you need to have those things in, in, in check because otherwise you could get dinged. Um, if your website's not, well now, the past, I think it's two years now, most uh, websites or most internet traffic is all through, uh, most of that is, more than half of that is through mobile phones. So if your site's not really rendering right on a mobile device, it's really going to be, um, you know, hindering you in terms of your traffic, in terms of your business, in terms of selling products or whatever that's going on. Okay? You can be unique. When you're using a developer, um, you're really going to get a, a true custom experience. So if you have already designed maybe your logo from wherever else, and you're like, I want to kind of take this logo, and I want everything to be built around this logo, um, whether it's the depth of it, the color schemes that may come out of it, um, the story that may come out of it, all of that, they're really going to take into consideration, build you a really unique platform. And then they're also going to understand what it is that you do, right? We, do a, we, we try to do a really good job about understanding what you do in your business, because we know what we do, right? But you guys know what you're doing individually. So the more that we know about what you're doing in your business or where your where your uh, goals are, we're going to do our best to take that and make up and make that a really good digital representation of a, what a, what a working website is going to be for you. Okay. Custom support. They're going to have a couple of different ways on how they work with you. Some may use tickets. Some may use a, uh, a website where you sign in and then you type in uh, a support ticket or something like that. Maybe an online chat, maybe a phone number that you dial and then you're in queue. Or maybe you have an actual rep that you get the chance to talk to whenever that you need to contact them. Or maybe they do better uh, through email. It all depends. Um, but what's nice about that is that you can kind of set those parameters up when you first sign up with them. Um, each developer is, is different. Um, they, have, they have their own ways of doing things. We, we all do. Um, but based on what your needs are, they can kind of meet that, which is really nice. All right. Hit that one more time. Yeah, cool. I, I forgot there was an animation there. Um, so now premium themes. Um, how many people here have a premium theme? Premium themes, and that's good. Premium themes are themes that you actually paid money for. So there's a lot of free themes that are out there. There's probably hundreds of thousands of free themes that are out there. Premium themes are, um, are, are themes that you would pay anywhere between, I'd say, $35 to $65, $70 for, right? Um, and they're good because they offer a little bit more in terms of options, or sometimes a lot more in terms of options that the free themes don't offer you. And so you get a lot of things right out of the box that's ready to go. Um, and that's what I want to talk about. So it, you kind of are ready to go right out of the box with a premium theme. Um, they give you all the files that you need, minus pictures and any videos that you may have seen in demos. But they give you the structure. They may give you an XML file that you can just upload, and it'll make it look exactly like um, the demo that you may have clicked on. Um, and so what's nice about that is that if you're kind of like on a budget, um, you can uh, load this, this XML file or load these files, and your website is like ready to go within minutes. And then at that point, all you're doing is just substituting the content, the dummy content, with your own content. So you're putting in your own images, maybe adding your own logos and, and all that other stuff, or maybe removing some pages or adding some other pages and renaming. So it's really nice if you're really looking to get something done, maybe within a weekend or within a day, um, you'll be able to kind of use one of these to uh, get your site going. You're going to save a lot of money. Um, Premium, like I said, premium themes go anywhere between 35 to 60 bucks. Um, whereas working with a developer or development team, you're probably going to be looking at you know the thousands. Um, on the development side, you know, using a team, if you like I said, if you're a business or an established business or looking for something to grow, um, you know, you probably have a budget where you could spend you know 20 to 50 thousand dollars on getting a, a site built. If you don't and you're looking, you know, you're really looking to shoe strap, you could really get away with using a premium theme. And kind of getting it set out of the box and getting going with it for you know pretty pretty less you know less than a hundred bucks in, in most cases. All right. So if you know a little bit of coding, it could go a long way um, because with the with the with the premium themes, you're kind of you're going to kind of get a bunch of options that they set up, um, and then if you want to deviate from what they've set up in terms of maybe colors or in terms of where the menus go or maybe how fonts go and different things like that or maybe how you want to adjust your logo or adjust certain key things within each page. Um, if you know a little bit of coding, um, you can really make that all of your own. 
And I'm not saying that with premium things you can't make that totally custom, and you totally and you really can. Um, but again, you don't necessarily need to. But the more that you do know, you really could make um, a really nice, different, and unique experience with a premium theme. So what's really nice about, about premium things is that you could test drive them before you buy them. Um, it's a contrast to what's going to happen on the developer side where they're going to kind of understand what you're doing, draw up some things, and give you some wireframes, and then take it from step by step to actually build you something. This you can kind of go through a couple different demos and click them, and actually click through all the links and see what the page is going to look like. You want to see what the about page is going to look like, you can click on that, see some dummy images, some dummy text, and really see how that's going to work and see if it's going to work for you and your business, right? You want to see how the contact page is going to be. A lot of these themes give you um, different types of home page variations that you can click on and you can see, oh, okay, maybe I like this or maybe I like it like this. And now that I know that I have all these options, this is really going to work for me before you buy it. All this stuff is before you buy it. The other thing that I like about this is that you could run these through, um, you know, page speed tests like, you know, Google's, uh, Google's speed test or Google's mobile friendly test and see, is it going to be worth my while? Is it going to work for me? Um, how fast does it load or how slow does it load? Um, you know, things like that. And again, if you, you know, know a little bit about coding, you can even look at the coding and kind of see how they loaded some of their scripts and if it makes sense to you or not, right? Um, so that's a great advantage to that. Um, there's documentation. Um, on the developer side, we, we usually want to give you documentation with your, with your theme, depending on what you're paying for and if it's, you know, worth the while. But you want to have something to understand hey, this is how the site is built. With a premium theme, you're definitely going to get that with just about all the themes that you, that you get. If it doesn't say that they give you documentation, then you probably want to run away because you need to know how to actually build your site, right? How does this function make this page work? Or how does me adjusting this widget? Or how do I get these widgets to show up on this page but not show up on this page? How do I get my logo to show up here and then minimize when I start scrolling down the page? All of those things are going to be in the documentation. I've seen some really good uh, theme developers where they offer documentation not just in digital or like an actual clickable form where you can click through and pull up, but they've also offered up in, um, in videos. So you can actually just watch you know, these short little videos that tell you, show you exactly what it is that you need to do. So it's really beneficial um, when you find some of these themes that offer um, documentation. But if, if anything, while you're, looking through the while you're looking through the theme, the details, you want to make sure that they offer um, documentation so you know what to do. So there's some things that you should know on both sides. Um, on the custom side, you want to have a clear, you want to have clear goals for your project development. Um, and by, 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 by having that is to kind of prevent scope creep. Scope creep is a, is a term where you're working on a project and then like 35% through the project or 75% through the project, all of a sudden there's all these other things that need to happen. Um, you know, we forgot this, we need to add that, we need to have this video come in and slide from the right or whatever. We need to add 30 more pages that we didn't think about now that we're starting to see the site build. Um, so you want to have a clear objective before um, you start building your project. The next thing that you want to do is you want to um, have a clear understanding for what their support channels are. We talked about that before. Some developers um, or development teams, they may use tickets, they may have uh, a phone, you know, actual dedicated person. They may be only available between eight and five and not on the weekends. You need to understand that so that way you know if you have a problem how to get in touch with them and you know, how, what happens if you have critical issues. Um, you're going to want to ask for references on their current clients. This is a really good one. There's a lot of developers that are out there and, then, and, and around the world, really around the world, around the country, um, that'll tell you that they could do everything. I've had a few that worked with me on my team that were fantastic. And um, over, over time, they just started to you know, fade away and then all of a sudden it's like no response and you're left holding the bag. I hated that. And so I want to make sure that every developer that I work with um, I know where they're coming from, okay? Um, I can call them, and I'll, I'll do it. And I'll say, hey, let me see your references. Just like they're, you know, going for a job interview. I need to call these last couple clients and understand how has it been with them? How long have you been working with them, right? Um, you want to check out their resume. See what they worked on. Um, me, myself, I work on all types of different websites for different types, for different people. I'm not really a niche web designer, um, but there are, some, there are some developers out there that are, and that's great if they are. Um, and there's some that are versatile that could do something, you know, for everybody. Um, but you should check out their resume to see if they're going to really fit you, right? Um, you're also going to make sure that um, there you have a mutually beneficial contract. Um, years ago, when I first got started, I saw, you know, I heard stories about people getting into contracts with the developers, um, where the developer owned everything, 
And when time came for them to switch over platforms and move on or do something, they kind of held it hostage and demanded a whole bunch of money like it was, you know, the Wild Wild West. Uh, you have to have a mutually beneficial contract to make sure that what you have on the website is all of your content, your domain is yours, and all the stuff that you're giving them is all yours, and their responsibilities to you as a supporter, as a developer, is, is true indeed, um, that they're going to be there, you know, for the times that they're going to be there and for the duration of the contract until you're ready to renew if you need to renew. Um, also, you want to make sure on the developer side, for us, we want to make sure that everything that you're giving us you say that you actually own because if we get an email or a, or a letter in the mail from someone says that the content on this website is plagiarized or is not authorized to be used or a cease and desist, we need to make sure that we can divert them right to you so that way we're not taking any litigation hits. Okay, um, so that's what I mean by you know mutually beneficial. You're also going to want to you know avoid scope creep. We kind of talked about that a little bit before. On the premium side, you want to test the demos in various browsers and devices. You want to make sure it's working on your tablet, make sure it's working on your phone, make sure it's working on this Windows PC, make sure it's working on this Mac PC, and our Mac you know, computer, and, and, all, and, all, and all around, right? Um, you're going to want to find out how their support is offered. On the premium side, they usually have support options on either their website, they have a support site where they offer, and usually that's tickets. You're normally never going to get a phone number to call to talk to somebody directly, but Depending on some of them, they may, they may respond to you within you know, 24 to 72 hours. It all depends on what their workload is. Um, you're going to want to view their ratings. The cool thing about going with premium themes is that you can see their ratings, see how many people bought the theme, see how many people rated it, see what people are commenting about the theme, um, and see how fast they're responding to these comments. Sometimes um, you know, they'll, uh, they'll respond to comments within a day, within hours. You want to kind of know that just in case you have to support, you know, submit a comment or a question and see how fast they're going to respond to you. Um, the ratings are pretty good as well because they'll kind of tell you, hey, this guy's got, you know, I'm looking at all these themes and everybody's like four and a half stars, five stars. This guy's got a really cool site. There's a really cool demo, but he's only got three stars. Something is wrong here, okay? Um, so look at that. You're also going to want to check, check, uh, check out the, check out the theme, uh, do a check on the theme developer themselves. Um, it's kind of like doing a little bit of uh, detective work, but, you know, you kind of want to see how long they've been out there. Um, see as much as you can find out. Do a Google search on them. See if there's like a ripoff report or anything like that that you can find out. It, it's only going to take you a couple of minutes, but it could really save you a lot of heartache on the, on the other end. All right? Um, you're going to want to read through all of the description of the theme. Most theme places, and we're going to talk about them in a second and where you can buy uh, themes from, um, they have a description on what you're going to be getting into um, in terms of, you know, what slider is in there, whether it's a revolutionary slider or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, uh, how the pages are built. If it's a what you see is what you get, like a WYSIWYG or a visual uh, editor, or is it you know, more short codes? Um, if you're not familiar with short codes and it's not something that you want to get into, you need to know that because you're going to buy a thing that you think is nice, and then everything is built by short codes, which is going to drive you absolutely bananas. Um, if, it's a, if it's more visual and you want like more drag and drop, you're going to need to know that so that way before you buy it, you know that, oh, okay, this is something that I could definitely do, and I can move things around from page to page and have a unique experience going forward. right? Um, you're also going to want to check out when the theme was created and when it was last updated. With WordPress, um, we usually have updates, core updates, you know, maybe once or twice a year, and then individual, you know, security updates, maybe every other month or something like that, or maybe every once a quarter. It really depends. Um, just like how you see updates with your plugins, you'll see updates with themes, and they're going to be they're going to be uh, describing that in their in their text there on when it was created and when it was last updated. So, for example, if there's a version of WordPress that's out and it's been out, the newest version, you know, that's out, I think it's like four point something right now, and um, their site, their theme says that their site is, or their theme is uh, ready for WordPress version three point something, you're going to want to step away from that because that means they're not even ready to support the latest version of WordPress out, which just means you're going to have a whole bunch of problems, okay? Um, so, where to find premium themes? These are some really good reputable sites to go to and buy themes from. Um, I've probably bought from most of them. Studio Press, if you're on Genesis uh, Framework. Um, Woo Themes, um, if you ever heard like WooCommerce, they also do themes as well. Um, especially if you're uh, someone who's looking to build a website, an e-commerce website, you probably want to go with the theme from Woo Themes because you'll be using WooCommerce anyway. So then you'll just know that you know, everything's going to be kosher. Uh, WPMU is more of a subscription site. But they've got a really good list of, uh, of themes and plugins that do uh, phenomenal things in a lot of different things. So you may want to check them out as well. Theme Forest and Mojo themes are more like theme markets where 
Um, developers will have to submit their themes to them, and they usually have to go through some kind of process of vetting them to make sure that the themes are, you know, are good. Not as I wouldn't say as rigorous as like someone submitting a, a, uh, an app for Apple in the App Store, but enough to where it's like not everything is just being thrown up there and no one's checking stuff. Okay. Thank you. Um, where to find WordPress developers? Um, here in Orlando, um, we have uh, WP uh, Web Wizard. Um, Carol Gann is, is uh, heading up that. Uh, High Forge is here. There's a company called Designzilla's. Um, Orange Blossom Media, which is David uh, Laetta, um, he's here. Brand Co. is here in Orlando. Elance is probably, um, they're all around, um, but I wanted to add them in there just in case. Um, check them out. Um, they're very, very brutal. You know, I go to them sometimes for, for overflow work or for help on different things. If I get stuck on something, um, they do operate on a, on a bigger scale. Um, but they do really, really good work, you know, and they've been around for a long time. Uh, so definitely check them out. And uh, that is it. So I have some time for questions. Great. Sorry. Yeah. I have a question. I don't know uh, if you're familiar with the store. Yeah. Stores in terms of? So in terms of the back end to make sure that in terms of the in terms of the theme, if you're using WooCommerce as the plugin, you mean or okay? Really. So you're looking for something that's a little more simple than than WooCommerce, maybe. No, you can't. So what um, you can actually, because there's actually there's codes that this this is where you get into short codes with that, and that's a little bit more of a you know like we could talk about that I more. A lot of codes for it. Yeah, but there's short codes for for actually getting products specifically just on on a page, just a product. I've done it. Yeah, with the or with the it's not gonna matter with with WooCommerce. Yeah, yeah. But see me after, and then we'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay. Okay. Um, Mm-hmm. Right. 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 So that's a you that's I'm not gonna say it's a unique situation. It's probably a little more on the common side than than the than the unique side. It really depends on the developer. Most developers, if they have a theme that's out there that they've produced, they're going to support it because they're going to have more, and so they're going to want to make sure that that's just good business. Now, in your situation, what you're probably going to want to do is you're going to want to find yourself uh, a theme developer or a, an actual developer and have them really look at your site so that way they can then support your site and your theme going forward. So if the theme developer doesn't no, no longer wants to support it, you're now, it's either you figure out how to code and support it or you hire someone to do that for you. And there are developers that will do that for you. However, it could be a little bit on the expensive side, so you're going to want to shop that out. Because one, they're going to want to make sure that the site you know, probably already has documentation, which makes sense. But then they are going to have to go in there and look at the code to understand why they did what and how they made things work. Or you could swap out the theme and then go. But see, here's the thing. If you're going to swap out the theme, it, Mm-hmm. Okay. So I haven't heard about that because what I was going to say is depending on how the theme was built, like for example, if, you, if some themes may use short codes, so that short code isn't going to translate to another theme if you go to a totally different theme developer, right? So you're going to make sure that you're going to want, so that's, that's all. So that custom CSS is really built on that, that theme. So you're going to lose that. Sure. Exactly. 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 
Yeah. So it's either that or you can stay there. You can stay with it and then just have someone support it. Or if you're going to, you know, totally start all over again, you're going to end up starting all over again. And you're probably going to want to choose a different developer, you know, or, you know, custom developer at that point. But if you stay in that, yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, see, that's good business. So most theme developers are going to follow that, that same practice so that you'll be all right. Um, so it really, it really depends. All right. Um, but that's a good question and good, you know, good support. Any other questions? Really? Awesome. I have the slides on my website. So um, I, I should have told you guys that at the beginning. But if you need a copy of my slides, if you go to my website, um, I have a call to action. Just join my mailing list. You'll, uh, you'll get that uh, via email, and then you'll be able to download it. And then all these points and tips are all in there. Um, but uh, thanks, for, thanks for listening.